Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Alex Mansman, and this is the very first video on my channel where I'll mostly be covering the Head Rush pedal board, uh, kind of showing you the ins and outs of uh, a lot of the amps and the effects. Uh, all the way up through, eventually I'll get to showing you guys my, my own live rig uh, and how I use it live with my band Joe Mansman and the Midnight Revival Band. Uh, so hopefully a lot of you will, will find that useful and get some good information out of it if you've maybe had questions, concerns, or doubts about uh, either the Head Rush pedal board or the gig board. Um, there'll be something here for everyone. So uh, what I want to kind of start with is a Jason Sadite style uh, template that I use to build all of my rigs around involving some parametric EQ and a bit of compression at the end of the signal chain. Uh, kind of the way Jason does with the Helix. Uh, so I just want to jump right into that because uh, a lot of the videos that I plan on making are going to revolve around this template. Um, and I just want to start too by saying that this is not something anyone has to use to make the Head Rush pedal board sound good um, or to make it at all usable. Uh, it's just something that I really like that Jason does and I've kind of found some things on the Head Rush pedal board that are sort of equivalent to what he does. Uh, on the Helix, and uh, it's for for me, it's it's changed um, my whole approach to the Head Rush pedal board, and uh, I'm I'm really really happy with the unit. So uh, let's jump right into it. All right, so to get started, I'm just going to show you a little bit of what's going on with this rig that I made here. Uh, I've got this set up for you guys. So the only important thing right now is the parametric EQ and the side comp that we've got going on. Um, I have this set up with a clean uh, Fender Twin and then a fairly dirty JCM 800, the stock one, none of the modded ones, um, and then the Soldano SLO 100, the extended range version. Uh, the Tube Screamer and Delay are going to be for later for some lead tones. Um, same with the graphic EQ, and uh, the reverb is always on in, in all of my presets. Uh, very low mix, only 10%, just for a little bit of a bloom and space in there. For the impulse response, I'm using the free one, uh, one of the free ones provided by Leon Todd, whose channel you should definitely check out. I've learned so much about modeling in general over there. Um, most of what he does does revolve around fractal products, but even if you don't own any of those, his general knowledge on modelers and how to use them is just phenomenal and super helpful for I say pretty much any platform. Um, so these were shot by Leon Todd himself, and this specific one is a Marshall 412 with vintage 30s. And you can see I've got the high cut set to 10K and the low cut down to 80 Hertz. Um, just real quick too, the reason I use this IR, I actually use um, a different IRs for when I play with my band, but the reason I'm using these is, first of all, they sound awesome. And second, they're free, and uh, Leon has been gracious enough to let me distribute these um, with my rigs that I'll have available for download for you, um, which will also always be free. I'm never going to charge you for rigs and presets and stuff, uh, stuff like that. So um, these just made a perfect match for, for my goal with this channel. And um, one of the other purposes is this is going to allow... Hopefully, as best as I can to, um, for what I'm doing here to translate to your system. It's never going to be the same because we are using different guitars and we play differently. And uh, we have to, we're, we're definitely going to have different playback mediums, whether it be um, a, a powered speaker or if you're going straight into a cab with a power amp um, or studio monitors. So those are always going to be factors that, uh, that make what you're hearing here sound different than when you download these things and try them out for yourself. Uh, but hopefully with at least the same impulse response, we can um, get a little bit closer and, and minimize a little bit of that. All right, so let's see. So this is a sort of a template that I use um, for any rig that I build on the Head Rush pedal board. And uh, it's something that Jason Sadites does really well with the Helix. Um, it's not a perfect translation of what he does just because the head rush doesn't have um, the specific blocks that he's using that the Helix has. Uh, for one, for, for compression, he's using the LA Studio Comp. We don't have that on the head rush. Um, and the parametric EQ on the head rush is missing a band or two. 
uh, but I was able to accomplish the missing band's worth of uh, EQing in the IR block himself, which Jason does not make use of. Um, he does not use the uh, high and low cuts in the impulse response or cab block on the Helix. Um, so this is basically as close as I can get, and uh, I think it makes a pretty big difference um, in overall how how any amp is going to sound um, on the head rush. And it's it's mostly that uh, the parametric EQ is kind of emphasizing and, and adding in um, a lot of those really important guitar frequencies um, that can just be missing, not necessarily out of modeling, but oftentimes out of our playback mediums, our FRFR speakers, um, the house PA, that kind of thing, um, studio monitors. Um, and then with the compressor, it's a, it's a very subtle compression, um, kind of just to give some, some glue. It, it just makes it feel a little bit better under your fingers, a little more familiar, um, like, like playing a little more like a tube amp. Um, it's not the exact thing. I'm, I'm not giving you the secret to the amp in the room tone, um, with modelers and FRFR speakers or anything like that. Um, but to me, it definitely does make a difference. So let's see what's going on in the parametric EQ block, which first you can see that there's a two decibel boost at 180 Hertz with a Q of 1.7. Then there's a 1.5 decibel cut at uh, 440 Hertz, 445 is close enough, um, with a Q of 1.6 and a three decibel boost at 4K with a Q of 1.4 and the fourth band is um, not boosting decibels one way or the other, or, or cutting decibels, but rather it's it's set to a 65k with a Q of 0.7, and that's a peak. Uh, so that's basically going to kind of limit the frequencies um, that are harsh on our ears. And then uh, if you go over to the compressor side of things. I'm using the side comp that's available in the head rush. And uh, even though I've got the preset set to the AM post EQ comp, which is the preset I'm going to be including um, in the rig you can download, what this actually is, is it's the soft preset that comes by default in the head rush. Uh, I came across it by a complete accident, just trying to find something that would match uh, the LA studio comp a little bit that Jason uses. Um, and this one just did it. I changed nothing from this. Uh, the only reason I renamed it is so that when you do go to download the rig, um, say you've deleted all of your presets or your head rush just for some reason doesn't have it, uh, got lost in the mix somewhere, um, you can recognize what I used by the name of that preset. And uh, all that's going on in here is a threshold of about minus 20 dB. The attack set to 2.3 milliseconds zero gains, pretty much unity, a ratio of 20 to one, and a release of 200 milliseconds with a knee of 30 decibels. Uh, it is not a ton of compression. It's not doing any extreme limiting. There's no, um, like, volume wall because of the compression going on or anything like that. When, uh, for example, you can, you know, use your volume knob to, uh, to make things happen and, um, you can use things like a graphic EQ to still solo boost your tone. Um, it's it's not it's not going to stop any of that stuff from happening. Um, and that is about it. So next, I just want to show you a few samples of what this sounds like with clean, dirty, and um, really dirty high gain amps. I'm just going to show you what's going on here. So we're just using the uh, Fender Twin with these settings right here. All right, and uh, a little bit of that plate reverb that I showed you earlier, and of course the uh, the Marshall 412 impulse response uh, with no parametric EQ or uh, compression applied just yet. So let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> And 
with the parametric EQ on. So you're going to notice um, what seems like a volume boost, and it probably is, but it's it's not directly. It's it's not a boost of just pure volume, um, but it's those that that 4K uh, really being pushed, and also some of those lower mids uh, in that 180 hertz range. Um, so let's hear what that sounds like. more lively to me um, a lot more like I've got a clean fender amp sitting behind me um, again not trying to give you that that magic uh, amp in the room out of an FRFR thing but to me that sounds a lot closer to that idea um, than just you know a rig without this applied um, it's definitely not something that's necessary to make the head rush sound any good it sounds just fine without this um, but Let's hit the compressor in addition to that now and hear what that sounds like. Right, so that just adds some some chewiness and playability, um, a little bit of feel good under the fingers to me. Uh, it's, it's not crazy amount of compression. It's not like, you know, the the Healy two knob in front of the amp kind of thing, country country type compression or anything like that. Um, just a little bit of glue to kind of pull everything together. Um, but let's hear this now with the it's the stock JCM eight hundred. Uh, the 100 watt and I'm going to show you the settings that I'm using on this let's take you through that so fairly dirty the preamp is cooking the master volume is cooking a little bit extra and that sounds like this without anything applied to it <laughs> with the EQ applied. <laughs> Definitely much brighter, more present. Um, and now let's add the compressor to it as well. Again, um, just with the compression on, uh, that just a little bit of glue under the fingers to, uh, to me, it just connects me more to what I'm playing and hearing through uh, an FRFR like I've got back here. Um, and let's try something really high gain. Uh, to me, it definitely helps clean up the high gain stuff, um, especially this Soldano extended range model here on the head rush. Um, it is definitely bassy there's this low end thing that's hard to get rid of in this amp um even with the bass all the way at zero right um so i'm just going to show you the settings here so nothing crazy on the gain 40 i do cook the master volume uh on this particular preset i just like how it feels um high mids and the bright switch always on with this amp for me it's an always on thing so um let's hear what this guy sounds like <laughs> And 
that's without anything on. Let's turn that EQ on, and uh, I think you'll hear quite a difference on this amp. Um, <laughs> Right, so really cleaned up um, a lot of that muddy low mid um, and the bass. And uh, to me, that's not really something I feel I can accomplish with just the amp controls. Um, and, uh, you know, just I'm, I'm not a fan of using the, the global EQ um, to fix stuff like this, just because it's going to affect everything that I play through it, and I'm not really looking for that. Um, but let's hear this again with the compression on as well. That's a whole nother level of note clarity to me. Um, there's a lot more definition in there, um, string separation, you can say. Um, so it's 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 subtle enough. It's not limiting volume um, again, which is which is what you don't want in this scenario. You don't want that kind of compression happening. Um, so just to show you what I mean, I'm gonna switch over now to some lead tones for you, um, and I. Uh, I'll kind of just show you how I accomplish that. All right, so let's check out some lead stuff. Um, just a little proof of concept about still being able to get a volume boost. Um, you know, I struggled with that for years with 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 tube amps. Uh, I had a ton of them. You know, the EVH, a bunch of Doctor Z amps. I had the Doctor Z EMS, which was like one of the coolest Marshall clones ever. Um, but to really get it cooking and sounding how I wanted it to. Um, I had to use an attenuator, I used some a uh, little bit of compression up front, and uh, I found that between the two of those, especially the attenuator, um, when solo boosting, it wasn't allowing that to happen. Uh, so one of the things I really like about modeling is kind of the number of creative ways that you can uh, solo boost, basically. And uh, we're, we're going to ignore the twin for this part of it. We're just going to do the... Uh, the JCM and the SLO for this. So um, I'm going to kick on this tube screamer in the front here, show you what those settings are. Drive 15, tone 66, and level all the way up. And a little bit of dynamic delay, show you those settings 300 milliseconds, 15% feedback, 20% mix. So pretty low, just a little bit of halo around the notes kind of thing. And uh, there's all of that. So the low and the high cut are important in this for me uh just because when when you control the uh the brightness of the repeats when you kind of dampen those down it stops it stops all the repeats from toppling over your uh, toppling over each other um and then the last thing i'm going to turn on um in just a second here is the graphic eq which i use for basically all of my solo boosting um so cutting low, uh, the low frequencies by a decibel, adding back in a little bit of low mid just for some of that thump, and then the mids and the high mids are being boosted by four decibels, nothing to the highs, and uh, just two decibels of, of pure volume going on in there as well. Um, so let's just hear what that sounds like uh, with the tube screamer and the delay, but without the graphic EQ. <laughs> Right, so that already sounds awesome, um, but just that alone isn't gonna th um, make me stand out in the mix in my band. Where we're two guitar players, keys, a bunch of vocals and drums and bass. Um, so when it's time to solo, I really need something to help me stick out a little more. Um, and uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to turn the parametric EQ back on. 
So just without everything, it was supposed to sound like this. So just to show you that this is perfectly fine for volume boosting, it's not going to mess with any of your dynamics in that regard. This is going to get a little bit, uh, just a little bit louder with the graphic EQ on. Now. All right, so there's that, and uh, let's try that again with the Soldano. Um, I'm going to take the drive out for this, but I'll leave the other settings on the tube screamer, just how those are. And uh, before graphic EQ, that sounds like this. All right, and then with the graphic EQ. And that's that. Um, so I think you get the idea. Uh, I was really grateful when I found that video from from Jason about uh, his use of some EQing uh, on on the Helix, and then being able to transfer uh, a similar idea over to the Head Rush pedal board. For me, it changed the sound um, quite a bit, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like I said, I use this in every rig, and I, I use quite a few with the band, um, JCM800 stuff, Soldano stuff, um, Plexis, the JTM45 model and stuff like that, and it just works really well with everything. Um, and again, it's not something that's necessary to make the head rush sound good at all. Um, it's something I like to do. You might wind up hating this. Um, it might all be a little bit too too bright and brittle for you. In a full band context, I think this is excellent. All right, thanks for checking this out, everyone. Uh, there you have it. Um, you know, love it or hate it, give it a shot. You might like it. You may think everything is um, much worse sounding with all of this going on. And uh, I just wanted to say, too, that this applies to using impulse responses. This does not sound great with the stock cabs in the head rush. Uh, don't use it with those. Just use it with impulse responses. Um, so whether you love it or hate it, I'm glad I got to do this one first, only because I am going to be using this template in future videos that I make. Uh, so hopefully you, you watch this one first and you're not watching future videos wondering what the heck is going on with those last two blocks at the end there. Um, which brings me to my one negative about this. It does permanently occupy two blocks. Uh, so those will be unusable for things like effects. Um, and, and different amps and that kind of stuff. Uh, but if you get creative, you can make it all work. Um, I will get around to a video showing you how I build um, entire rigs, something I call pages. It's not official head rush terminology, but I basically build rigs around one amp with different pages worth of effects on that same model. Um, but we'll get around to that eventually. Um, so thanks for checking this out. And again, huge thank you to Leon Todd uh, for providing the free impulse responses, which you can download directly from him in the link that I uh, provided below, along with um, the blank template that I'm going to be giving you when I say blank template. Um, I just mean it's going to include the parametric EQ and the compressor. It's not going to include the amp uh, and the effects and all that stuff. So I'll let you play with all that stuff on your own. All right. Thanks for checking this out, everyone. See you.